To solve exponential type things like i to the i, we often insert an e to the ln. We can do this because the exponential and logarithm functions are inverses, they undo each other. And the reason we do this is because of those properties of logarithms that let us drop down exponents as a coefficient. So e to the i natural log i is a different representation for i to the i and something we can figure out. We just have to know how to deal with logarithms of complex values. To figure this out, let's remember that any complex number can be written in the form a plus bi. You might call this rectangular coordinates or a Cartesian system. Or we can represent it in terms of polar coordinates, drawing this triangle and using the legs of the triangle, r cos theta and r sine theta, instead of a and b. We can factor out that r, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle, and hey, look at that, there's the famous Euler's formula. Cosine theta plus i sine theta is e to the i theta. So any complex number can be represented as r e to the i theta, r being the distance from the origin, and theta being that angle measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. This is now very convenient to take the natural logarithm of, since again we can apply properties of logarithms, splitting up this product into a sum of logarithms, and again we're seeing natural log and e cancelling out just going the other way. Again, those are inverse functions, they undo each other. Now we know what the natural logarithm of a complex number should be. It should be the natural logarithm of r, the distance from the origin, plus i theta, theta being that angle measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. To compute natural log of i, how far is i from the origin? Well, it's a distance of 1 from the origin, so in this case r is 1, i lives along the positive vertical axis, and the angle theta is 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. Thus, natural log of i is natural log 1 plus i times pi over 2. Of course, natural log of 1 is 0, and we can answer our question. It's e to the i times i times pi over 2. By definition, i squared is negative 1, and we get i to the i is e to the minus pi over 2, a real number. There is a caveat if we think about coterminal angles. i does indeed make a 90 degree angle with a positive x-axis. Theta is pi over 2, but we could travel around the circle another 2 pi radians and end up in the same place. So theta could be pi over 2 plus 2 pi, and we get a different result. In fact, we could do this infinitely many times, either clockwise or counterclockwise, and get an infinite number of solutions. But we often restrict our discussion to a single interval, and when someone says i to the i, they usually mean this value is about a fifth. But if you thought this was interesting, you're really going to enjoy this video on imaginary numbers. Go check it out right now. I'll see you in that one.